Monster. Hey everybody, welcome to another fantastic episode of The Hogs Die. It's a fantastic episode because all three of us are finally back together. Steve and Jamal, welcome, Yay. welcome, welcome. Happy to have the whole crew here. Uh, you know, what's left of our crew as we've gone through so many different crews over the years, Steve, <laughs> you and I. Yeah. I like to we are forgetting our, our fourth, by the way, our little fourth guest, which is Jamal Thaw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. in the, in the background that? about to break my glass uh, TV stand. So. Uh-oh. Yeah, she 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 can't she scared me for a quick second, but she got back on. The road. Yeah, she, she's one of my fav. She's one of our favorite guests. She's hanging out with us today. Uh, yeah. I, I made the the mistake once again, um, like I did about a month ago, of, of getting her a toy right before the show. <laughs> so so now she's all intrigued with this this new toy of hers, and she's she's stressing herself out. But it's not a chew toy this time, at least. So we're not going to get the well, squeaky squeaky. Well. uh... I did get her a chew toy, a uh, squeak toy, but I, I locked it in the creek. <laughs> oh, God. I, 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 I was like, I'm not going to make Well, that's probably me. worse, man. <laughs> yeah, she, she was struggling at first until she found out what the other one does. So now she's intrigued with this one. All right. <laughs> I'm going to let her loose once this show's over. Well, once I get back, but um, I'm going to let her loose so she'll have a little bit of fun. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, guys. Well, we have a good show today. Uh, we are going to be breaking down safeties uh, as we do our usual position group breakdowns we like to do in the off season. But first, we have two Twitter topics that we want to get into. Uh, one kind of unexpected for us, and it's not like it's a big coup or anything, but we did this silly little uh, Twitter question, I guess you want to call it. It wasn't really a poll, but we just asked people, uh, to name their top three Redskins quarterbacks uh, based off of some other uh, mainstream people saying, who are your top three quarterbacks all time? And that thing blew up, Steve. Uh, now, I sure initially kind of saw you tweet this, and I was like, yeah, it's just content. It's a nice little throwaway, which I'm assuming was your thinking. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I didn't think we'd get two of the t- you know greatest quarterbacks in Redskins history involved in comedy right. on it, no. Right, and yeah, because... <laughs> Both Mark Rippon and Joe Theismann responded into this tweet, <laughs> into this thread. It's got like 50 comments. Uh, so, you know, not huge by Twitter standards, but when you get two For us. MVPs, I believe both of them were MVPs at one point, right? I think so. Uh, They're both Super Bowl MVPs. Uh, yeah. That's for sure. Um well, gee, yeah, Theismann was. I was I, the reason I questioned, I wasn't sure if Mark Rippon was a league MVP. Well, I think he was a Super Bowl MVP. Because didn't he throw for like 380 on, yards or I something? Know, okay, all right, so we got to get this right. Uh, okay, so Mark Rippon, Super Bowl MVP, two-time Pro Bowler, and then second-team All-Pro oh, okay. in 91. Second-team All-Pro. We haven't had one of those in a while. Second-team All-Pro. Yeah. Well, well, no, uh, Trent Williams was a second-team All-Pro. Oh, was he? We haven't yeah. had a first-team All-Pro. Oh, that's all right, pro. that's right. It's, yeah. Yeah. But Trent was the only one for for right. sure for right. you know twenty five. Not, not the last punters, one I think was the punter. Was uh was it Turk? Yeah, Matt Turk, Turk was, I think uh, was first the first team, team, and I think Tressway has been second team a few times as a punter. But uh, regardless, it's just very funny. We do this dumb little poll, and by the way, uh, I made a joke response, uh, you know, in my reply. But if you didn't answer Sammy, Sonny, and Joe. I, I, you're wrong. Like, those are the three. It's not really even a hard question. Well, w- wait a minute. Hold on. See, there is an argument. I think you can make an I, – I, first of all, I agree with your list. That's my list too. Sammy, Sammy uh, uh, Sonny, and Joe. But there's an argument for Doug Williams. It depends what you call greatest, sure. right? Because I, I didn't not like I defined it. I just said, hey, who are your greatest Redskins? That could mean anything to people. You have a legitimate argument for Doug Williams based on the social implications of him winning the Super Bowl. That's fair. Uh, to being on the list. You have – an argument for Mark Rippon, because of all of them, if you put all of them on the field together, you might want Mark Rippon out of all of them. So you have an argument for him, too. He might too. have the strongest think, arm of all of them. Yeah, right. And so I think the, the five of them together in some order or another are those. Mm-hmm. Because I think the, the one that's indisputable to me is is uh, Sammy Baugh. Sure. Sammy Baugh is a titan among NFL Redskins quarterback. He was a revolutionary. He was really the first great NFL quarterback, right. you know, uh, going all the way back to the 40s, really. Um, 
you know, drafted in 37. So I, he's a, a giant. And I think you got to throw Sonny in there. He's in the Hall of Fame. Right, right. It, you know, the third one is the is kind of, to me, where you can kind of mix and match mm-hmm. them. So let, let's read Joe Theismann's comment about this because Joe's, Joe Theismann wrote something. So let's just read it. And he said, when it comes to, to the QBs, Sammy was incredible. Sonny was masterful. Doug, Rip, and I were fortunate to play for Coach Gibbs. Today, the system you play in means so much. Sammy and Sonny had to call their own plays, and I did the first two years in the league. So that was his kind of reasoning. So I think it's safe to say he, he agrees with us that the first two are Sammy, Sammy and Sonny. And, you know, Sammy Ball, now, none of us were alive to watch him play. You know, like, he stopped playing in, I think, 48 or something like that. No, 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 52. 52? Oh, I it, believe it was. He had, yeah. he had a long run. But, yeah, that, I mean, like, there's not a lot of people left alive who really saw Sammy play. You know, no. they, they might have been little kids and they saw some of it. But And nobody is, I can get, almost guarantee you, not one of those people's listening to the show. <laughs> no, they probably don't know what internet is. <laughs> probably or not. if they do, it's horrible for their kids and grandkids. Because, you know. <laughs> grandkids? I mean, great grandkids. Great grandkids. Kidding me? Yeah. Uh, well, their grandkids are old. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, but anyway, so, Jamal, what, do you have uh, any unique, like, third person you'd put in that list, or do you disagree somehow that those with the it top is, two? It is impossible for me to disagree with what they're saying um, for the simple fact that I was born in 1993. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I, I don't know not a single – I mean, obviously, I've seen clips, and I've seen I've seen a couple games here and there as well. Um but I ain't, I haven't watched tons of games, so it's 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 hard for me to disagree. The only thing I can really do is respect their opinion, um, because if you ask me for my three quarterbacks, it will be a pathetic list based on. <laughs> well, based well, on I mean, we, we were asking, yeah. you know, because I mean, the point of the poll was just a kind of a silly content thing, and you know, I mean, I didn't define how you define your list. Yeah, you know, so what is your list, Jamal? Oh Lord. Okay. Um, all right. So let me let me shoot out the first three quarterbacks, but then I give me a chance to rank them uh, so I, so I, so I can help myself out. Um, so obviously Kirk Cousins is in there. Um, oh Lord. Um, <laughs> Mark. This Bru- gets skimpy, Mark, doesn't Mark, it? For if you're talking about your <laughs> time frame. Very Mark thin Brunel, quick. Mark Brunel, um, and Brad Johnson. Um, these are this is this is a very shaky list. I know, I know you all. Well, because right, listen, it's a very shaky list. Um, but I, I can't get I can't give uh, RG three the benefit of the doubt because it was one year, uh, one season that he played well. I can't do it. Um, Alex Smith, he was awful. Um, last year it was a WTF. I don't I don't know. Um, so 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 Brad Johnson. Uh, Kirk Cousins and uh, Mark Brunel, and then to rank it, obviously Kirk Cousins number one, um, Brad Johnson number two, and Mark Brunel number three. Very, I mean, very shaky list. Though. Here's the thing: if we're doing, you know, guys you actually saw play, your list and my list aren't much better, uh, you know, because for me it's going to be Kirk, probably Mark Rippin, and uh, I'm trying to think who would be my third, like it, it, maybe Brad Johnson, maybe Jason Campbell, even like the. You know, it's a thin picking because uh, even though I was born in 83, I don't remember seeing Joe or Doug Williams play. I, I was four when Doug Williams won a Super Bowl. So, yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, um, was, I was I was six. I was six or seven when Brad Johnson was around. Um, right. And even even at that point, like, I don't remember it real time. I just I, I've seen enough of that, that of that time period that I, that I know who sure. Brad Johnson was. So. And then I was on well, top of that, I've seen Brad I mean, Johnson play over the years too, so I know I know the caliber of quarterback he was. And of course, he was only with the Redskins two years himself. Right. You know, it's not like he didn't have a long tenure. For me, I mean, my dad was a season ticket holder for the '82 strike shortened Super Bowl season, right. so I saw all those games. And so, jo, you know, Joe Theismann will always be number right. one for me I mean, that's in my lifetime. Logical. You know, like why wouldn't? Yeah, he? I mean, and then I'd I'd probably go with Rippin number two. I, I feel bad about sliding Doug Williams. In, in this discussion, just because you know of the implications, the social implications of what he did, but the fact of the matter is, 
he only played a handful of games for the Redskins. Right. And so if you just talk about strictly contributions to the team, I mean, I'd probably put him I, – I mean, without – with no disrespect to him, I'd probably put him behind those guys just for that reason. You know, so for me, for my list, it'd definitely be Joe Theismann, Mark Rippon, and then, I mean, pick your I mean, third because it, it's a way down the you, list. If you're taking the off-field Tom contributions Campbell. of people to the history of football, Doug is, you know, in the Mount Rushmore. In the of, small room. In the small yeah, room. Yeah, he's in a yeah. very small room just because of his historic implications of his success. Um, right. And, you know, I, I, Jamal, you actually wrote something a while back when the whole Michael Jordan documentary was going on. You said oh, they should yeah. do one, a yeah. documentary on Doug Williams. And I agree with you. I think his story, he's not Michael Jordan. He's not an MVP. He's not a Hall of Famer. But his story is even more fascinating because you're talking about a guy who probably struggled for two decades and then won a Super Bowl. You know, yeah. like his that, career that was year, so iffy. You, it was like. From what I remember, or from from what I was told, <laughs> um, but from that year that they won the Super Bowl, um, well, it was like it it was a, it was a not a battle, but like it was multiple quarterback changes prior to mm-hmm. the playoffs, and Correct. somebody got injured in the playoffs, and there he goes, um, and he takes off and, and has the best you know Super Bowl to shoot. Super Bowl game to that to that point, and, and it's still for a, a good amount of time as well, statistically. Yeah. Um, so, so, so I think, yeah, I, I kind of felt that way too. Um, he didn't have like the best career in terms of uh, in totality, but um, you know, you can you can actually kind of uh, talk about what he went through as a black quarterback and the other black quarterbacks, and then when he makes his way and gets his opportunity here, um, just for that single moment in itself, you know, kind of tells tells a story of. of his entire career, I guess. I, so I mean, speak. he was in uh, Tampa when they were awful. I, I think was he right. there for one of the Owen fourteen teams? Or I believe. I yeah, so. I believe he yeah. was. And then <laughs> didn't he go to the CFL for a while? Like he had a tough career that he slogged through. So like, and and then I, I think you really could look at his post playing career as just another amazing chapter. Doug is one of those people who historically fascinating uh, career in football. Like just because he coached where Grambling and uh, one yeah. other HBCU. Okay, we'll go over this. Uh, first of all, you're, I've forgotten about this, Alex, but you're right. He he played for the Oklahoma slash Arizona Outlaws from 1984 to 1985. That's according to Wikipedia, which is the so USFL, way to look. not CFL. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the historic part of where he coached was Grambling because right. he followed Eddie Robinson right. as a head coach at Grambling. Eddie Robinson being a, a, a giant of the game in his own right, you know, in the college mm-hmm. ranks. Um, and then he was with, you know, he. Uh, I mean, he's with Southern University also for a year. I mean, yeah, Doug is. Um, again, it just kind of depends on how you define great and what your personal list is, because nobody, I think, would um, deny that. His impact on the game is in whole is just True. tremendous, you know. But just when you're talking about just what you do on the field, if that's a bigger part of it, he's a little bit lesser than the other greats. Uh, well, I, I think because you know, he didn't play field, much, as much. You know, he he had a bad record. He you know, like he was a bad. Well, I mean, he career. won a Super Bowl. Yeah. I mean, remember, you know, what Jamal was talking about in the '87 year was that Jay Schrader was the quarterback. Right. Jay got hurt. And then Doug came in to replace him and was so good that nobody wanted Jay back. And everybody was worried that Jay was going to – they were going to put Jay back in the right, game. Right, I remember. You know? Or I don't remember. Because Doug remember, just – and remember what I remember – this is before your time, Jamal, with the show. But when we had Ricky Williams uh, – Ricky Williams um, – Ricky Sanders on, we, on the show, we asked him about – uh, the social implications of Doug Williams being the first African American quarterback to win, and he said we didn't care about that. We just wanted to win, you know. Mm-hmm. And it didn't really occur to them, I think, at the time, according to Ricky Sanders, that it was that big of a deal because they just they you know they were so focused on winning that nobody cared about what color the man was. And that's the right way to go about it. I mean, if you're going to win, that's how you have to. That's your mentality. You have to. Yeah. Now, I'm sure Doug would tell you something different because we all know he was asked questions in press conferences. Uh, the famous one being, "How long have you been a black quarterback?" <laughs> um, no, yeah, you know, I've read about, yeah. I've read that whether that actually happened or not. I don't know if that really did happen. The way, because that's such a dumb we question DM, to ask. Let's obviously. DM Rick Snyder later, and we'll because he he was there, he would know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, we'll ask yeah. Rick because you know he'll, he'll just tell fact, us. I'm going to yeah, text him right now, that. and we'll see. 
we'll see if he responds yeah. in time. Um, um, but anyway, so but uh, you know, so I guess there's two lists. To sum this up, if you want to go broad historical Redskins context, it's definitely Sammy and Sonny, and then somebody sure. else. If you want to go just in your respective lifetimes, very different. List that becomes people. a lot harder. Yeah, yeah, and see the dog. Yes. Agrees. <laughs> yes. She must have seen somebody out this window. Granted, her list is going to be even worse because she's only what, like, less than a year old. She's a year old. All she all she knows is uh, Case Keenum. So, so Case she can, and, she's she got a go trash can with her opinions. <laughs> it's either Case or Haskins, and she doesn't yeah. even have a number three yet. Yeah, so she can go away. Yeah, her opinion's invalid. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's move on to our uh, actual other Twitter topic because we had two Twitter topics today, um, and that is we did a poll. Uh, and let's put it in some context. Uh, the poll's about Antonio Brown. Dwayne Haskins has been working out in Florida, and Antonio Brown has been one of the receivers he's been working with. I don't know how that all happens, you know, how these guys get lined up. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if agents are involved or what, but this led to some controversy on Redskins Twitter about should the skins target Antonio Brown. So now, Steve, you can present the poll. <laughs> Okay, well, we saw the Dwayne Haskins, Chad Ochocinco, Antonio Brown little workout poll because Ochocinco was playing DB in those clips. And, and that, again, like Alex said, caused everybody to go through consternations about it. And so we thought, hey, that's a good poll. Uh, so the poll question was, should Washington try to sign Antonio Brown? Um, only three choices this, this week. Definitely meaning definitely, yes, yeah, sign him, uh, only for a small contract. Yes, but sign him only for a small contract, and then absolutely not. Those are the three choices. Um, so let's, as we do every week, we'll ask everybody's their opinion and, and try to guess what the fans think. Let's start with Jamal, because Jamal's been out. Jamal, uh, thoughts on the poll? Well, thoughts on the poll, I think that people are living in fantasy land. Um these are just people that are throwing, just happen to be throwing the football together because they're in the same area and they want to get some good work in. I think fans, though, took this picture or video, whatever it was, I can't remember. They it's took both. it and ran with it, um, and they feel like that Antonio Brown should be a Redskin. Um, so I think that they're going to um, – I think they voted for us uh, to sign him. Um, I did forget the, the two choices. that You said it was, it was yes, but like a – um, but was definitely or only to a, signed to a small to contract, a small meaning contract. they can get rid of him okay. or no. Yeah, I think that, yeah. that was that was my vote. Yes, yes, before a small contract. Um, but look, if they do that, that's fine for a small contract. But it kind of contradicts everything that Ron Rivera has been preaching to this point. But fans don't care because they flip flop a lot. I think General Hall's probably right on. Right on with uh, his prediction. I think the fans probably said yes for a small contract because uh, Twitter fans are, you know, you know my feeling on Twitter fans. They're questionable at best sometimes. <laughs> Twitter in general is a humongous dumpster yeah, fire. Yeah, it is. Um, so then with my own opinion, of course, I say not for all the tea in China. No, 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 no. Stay away. Man's a cancer and a psychopath and – this is the guy who you bring in if someone's – or who you guess is going to bring, like, a gun into the locker room and start shooting up the place. Like, <laughs> Let's hope not. Let's hope I, I'm happen. hoping none of this happens because I'm hoping <laughs> they keep him as far away from Ashburn and the Washington, D.C. metro region as possible. Yeah, I agree with Alex uh, for, for my vote. I, I don't want the – number one, he's 32 years old. He hadn't played in, what, a year Something and a half? Like that, yeah. Um, it's not to say that he wouldn't be – at least some percentage of what he was, but you throw in crazy and I don't want anything to do with Antonio <laughs> Brown myself. Um, 58% of the people agreed with Alex and I and said, absolutely not. No. Oh. Cause Jamal, you said only for a small contract, right? <laughs> that was your vote. Yes. Okay. The fans agree. said by a vote of 58%, absolutely not. 28% of you said only for a small contract. And then bringing up the rear 14% was definitely, um, and, and the definitely crowd, is like, listen, the man's a, you know, Pro Bowl, you know, or all pro, you know, we can deal with all this other stuff. That's basically what they think. We did get a bunch of, a good amount of comments. So thanks to everybody who commented. We will read a few here. Um, Dave, who's one of our more loyal listeners, 
said, I can't believe this is a serious question. Right. And he's obviously saying, why are you guys even yeah. considering Dave, Dave is Antonio an Brown? interesting <laughs> regular almost for us at, in these polls now. And, and I know he DMs oh, yeah, us yeah, yeah. and stuff like that, too. Like, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Dave's a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I say so that in a loving enough. way, Dave. Uh, uh, Cage Tater, who's at Redskins Potatoes, another guy who responds to a lot of these. AB is a nut and not a team guy. Rivera ain't about that life. <laughs> um, here's one that's a yes. And it's a long comment. I may kind of edit this a little bit on the fly. Uh, this is AD 2.0 West Coast style is the handle. He says, I say yes, only if the rookies and Harmon don't show me something. AB is special. Him and McLaurin with Sims in the slot is trouble and would take pressure off Haskins in the run, run game. Then he says he'd want to be a, a one-year deal. So it sounds like he agreed with you, Jamal, which is a small contract. So that's somebody in front of it. Somebody named Alex put, in a, put a little GIF in here. <laughs> Alex three five three yeah, two I don't know that two. <laughs> <laughs> that said, you know, uses words that I don't use in here. Um, let's see, uh, Redskins football, Redskins underscore football. Absolutely not. It's only a matter of time before AB goes suicide bomber on the whole team. That's kind of what I'm afraid of. I, I think that's what I, anyone should just, be afraid of. Yeah, he's he's crazy. Um, there's just so many no's on here. Holy moly. Um, no, almost 32. Suspension looming. Notorious team killer. Pass for me. That's Daryl at Ocon 119. Um, here's an insightful one. Jason Lamberson, who's at Lamberson something. Uh, it runs off the page. As, anten- as tantalizing as it sounds, we're not an Antonio Brown away from making a playoff run. So I'd say pass and continue to build the team and culture the right way. That's actually, from an on-the-field perspective, I think that's the right And answer. I think so, too. Because you don't bring in a 32-year-old ex- expensive vet on a team that's building. He's like, a, I'm a one, we're a one-piece-away guy team, and we have a strong locker room and can keep him in mm-hmm. check. The Redskins have nobody who's going to keep him in right. check in the locker room because they're all a bunch of young guys. And, yeah, I, I, that's, that is probably the right answer for me uh, in terms of the on-the-field stuff. The other part is he's freaking I, nuts. I, but that's, I do know. think that Coach Rivera is a coach who could keep him in check, but it would take way too much of his energy to do that. Like, that's the guy who you it would expect to be able to keep someone like Antonio Brown in check. But, yeah, it, it's just too much energy. I mean, we're talking about a guy who Mike Tomlin couldn't keep him in, under control after a while. Uh, John Gruden couldn't keep him under control. And, and those are not slouches as head coaches either. You know, I, I don't necessarily love either of them as a head coach. Like, I have issues with uh, John Gruden. Be, I think he gets... They're a strong personality, yeah, so... Yeah. But, like, if they can't keep him in check fully, I, I don't know. Like, the, the guy's – the guy was throwing gummy penises at cops. Like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> he was, yeah. yeah. I, well, now I, you I will know, and give thing- him credit in a sense. Only only a small credit is nothing is nothing significant. Um, the past – what is it, May? Probably like the past couple of months we understand that he's been quiet. He's, he's, he's working on himself. Um, we know that much. We don't know the full True. thing, but we know that he's working on himself and uh, trying to trying to do better. Uh, I was listening to a podcast the other day uh, where his trainer had some insight on what what he was doing. Um, so that's that's the only thing I can speak towards mm. in terms of Antonio. But um, yeah, that's the only bit of credit I'll give him is the past couple months. But we know his history. Yeah, yeah, and. And when we say he's been quiet, that means he hasn't been arrested. Right. You know? yeah. But to, to be fair, uh, to be no fair, sense. yeah, exactly. Stay off Twitter. Twitter's not your friend, Antonio. I mean, with the Raiders thing, um, I gotta put. I have to put some of the blame on Mike Mayock sure. for it. Sure. You know, because Mayock, who is, it has to be said, a junior GM who's never been in charge of anybody. He's been commenting on NFL Network for, what, a decade, Mm -hmm. you know, at least. And now he's thrust into a leadership role, and he just handled um, Antonio Brown really badly. Really, really badly. Awful. And so Mayock, I think, exacerbated that situation quite a bit. You know, if you had just let John Gruden deal with it, he might still be a Raider. Mm, Maybe. Maybe, you know, but it, the, the, it's I think the combination of circumstances um, did him in. And Bill Belichick just isn't going to play with yeah. any of that. It's like, get out, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but so I, I, I just wonder if Mike Mayock hadn't been there or Mayock had shut up 
and let Gruden do it, deal with it, I think it might have turned out differently. Because the Raiders, it's not like the Raiders don't have a history of strange players yeah, in their own that's right. That's true. <laughs> um, well, uh, let's change gears a little bit and talk more about those Haskin workouts. Because, I mean, he's definitely one of these guys who he has somebody tweeting out highlights of him throwing. And uh, we've heard he's working out with some of these big names, uh, like you mentioned, Chad Ochocinco and Or I think, is he, is he going by Chad Johnson again? He might be. I think he might have, I don't but know. doesn't matter. Nor, nor do yeah. I care. <laughs> so, uh, but he's also been working out with Terry McLaurin and I believe Sims uh, down there, or maybe it was Harmon. I can't remember. But two of the guys have been down there with him. Um, I, you can't tell too much from a workout, but one thing I will say that's obvious is just how much better physical physical condition he looks as opposed to what he looked like coming out last year. He's like slimmed um. down. Very more, much more lean and muscular looking, because um, you know he, he was kind of like a baby face, and a lot of guys are their rookie year. He was a little, yeah, pudgy. A little pudgy. I mean, by NFL player standards, the baby fat, as know, they like to sometimes year. call it. Yeah, he's trimmed down a lot. He's gotten in better shape. I mean, I don't know if that means anything in terms of his ability to be sure, a quarterback. Sure, at know. least it means he's um, keeping in shape. Yeah, I mean. I don't know what you guys' opinions are about this, but it's been a little distressing to me to see the total lack of respect this man has gotten in the national mm-hmm. media. You know, I, it's like, did you guys not watch the games? Yes, he was bad in the beginning of the right. season. Nobody would deny that. But he made a ton of progress in a year that was a stressful year for this franchise with an interim coach who wanted to pretend that Sammy Ball was the quarterback. Right. You know, not, and it wasn't actually 2019. He improved a lot. I mean, a lot. He looked like a legit. By the end of the year, he looked like a legitimate starting quarterback. And and the fact that who was it that ranked him? 30, Chris yeah, Sims said he was thirty ninth out of forty. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. What does Chris Sims yeah. know? Uh, you know, uh, ranked him. Uh, hey, you're the one hey, that ranked hey, Lamar he Jackson. He has 30th, a dad who so. was pretty good. That's that's Chris Sims' life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's Chris, seriously. Yeah. That's Chris Sims' entire life. Uh, he also ranked Lamar Jackson thirtieth last yeah. year. So I don't know why anybody cares about Chris Sims. But point is, I think. Dwayne Haskins is drastically underrated by a lot of people in the media for some reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't think he will light the world up like Lamar Jackson did last year, but I think he'll be – I'm fairly confident that he will be a good quarterback this year, and he, we'll see significant improvement from last season. Yeah, Absolutely. I got some confidence in him uh, too. I, th- I think one of the things – now, the, the hardest thing to project, uh, and, and you, kind of, you guys kind of alluded to it, um, but the hardest thing to project really nowadays is uh, performance based off of workout videos. Like people post them. So, oh my goodness! I got side. I didn't realize how much battery I didn't have left in my <laughs> laptop. I thought I charged it last night. But anyway, um, the hardest thing to project uh, nowadays is is performance on the field based on you know workout videos. People post them so much. Uh, like, and, and when you see them so much, they, they start, and we're talking about athletes here. Like everybody posts workout videos, us, normal people, uh, lawyers, doctors, all the, all, all everybody, the professional athletes, when they post them, it's different to Mm -hmm. everybody else. So they just see somebody going hard in the gym and they're like, Oh snap. Um, this person is going to have a killer year. Um, Haskins is is semi different in the sense that. When you see a guy like that who started where he started last year, but you also see him lose the weight, you also see the the rave reviews by his coaches, and we're mm-hmm. only talking about film work to this point. When you see those type of things added into him taking his diet serious, um, and then his performance the last couple games of the year, you understand that he's trending upward, and you understand that he has something that he wants to prove. Um, because if he didn't, he would be the same quarterback that didn't really take. Uh, you clearly can see that he he wasn't taking his diet serious based on what he was doing uh, this off season alone. He started mm-hmm. taking it serious and he started getting his act together. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how he does. But I do got confidence that he's going to play well. Yeah. Um, well, Jamal, we'll vamp. Well, if you want to go run and grab your charger or something, it sounds like you need to. Um, <laughs> well, I got a power save. Yeah, okay. Um, well, one thing that I think uh, is big for me is really that he went down to Florida and got Terry and uh, one of the other receivers to come with him because we were starting to hear how Tom Brady was working out with his receivers down there. And, you know, with everything going on, you couldn't really do that in the D.C. area without somebody giving you, you know, crap for it. 
So, you know, him saying, all right, let's roll down to Florida, smart move. You know, he's getting, he's going where he can get the work in. And, you know, like to me, that's a great sign of some future, you know, leadership from a quarterback. As a complete unrelated aside, did you guys hear the story about Tom Brady walking into the wrong house in Florida? No. Did you guys hear this? Oh, my. Oh, yeah, Jamal heard it. So Brady gets signed by the Bucks. He shows up in Tampa, and he's been texting the Buccaneers offensive coordinator, whose name is escaping me, but former NFL quarterback, and I can't remember his name. It's totally, I'm totally blanking on it. But um, that – Buck's offensive coordinator lived right next door. The house right next door is the exact same house. And so Brady shows up in like an Uber or some right. driver, and he, and he doesn't ring the doorbell. He must have been texting the guy and saying, hey, I'm here. And so he doesn't ring the doorbell, and he walks straight in, and it's a completely other house. And this random guy is sitting in his living room, and Tom Brady walks in, drops a bag by the door, walks into the living room, and sees it's not the guy. And he goes, oh, gosh, I'm sorry, and walks out and doesn't say another <laughs> word. <laughs> you know? Can you imagine just sitting there chilling on your couch and Tom Brady walks in the door and you have no idea at no. all? I thought that was just an amazing story. I mean, and, of course, the guy knew that, again, the, the, the guy whose name is escaping uh, me gonna is, ne- is next. Yeah, please do because it's somebody that we should know. Um, he knew that guy is next door. You know, so it, it wasn't a complete shock. But still, I thought that was funny. Um, but yeah, so what I was going to say about Haskins, and we've been we did our position group breakdown yeah. already on quarterbacks. But I mean, don't forget Chris Sims. Well, okay, so you the, know it, it's Clyde Christensen is the QB coach in Tampa. Well, I didn't say QB coach. I said oh, offensive oh, coordinator. Offensive coordinator. That's uh, Brian Leftwich. Yeah, yeah. thank you. That's who it is. By, Byron yeah. Leftwich. But yeah, that's yeah, that's what I was thinking of. I mean, but don't forget Chris Sims. You know that in the last two games. You know, his quarterback rating was over 120, you know, and if you average it together, it's about 130. Yeah. yeah. You know, completion percentage, over 70%. He was legitimately playing well. The team sucked, no doubt, but he was legitimately playing well. He was. And, you know, it's, it's just not fair. You're going to rank him down 30th. I just now offended me. I've, uh, so I, what I was yeah. going to say, uh, hold on one second. Can you, guys hear, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. What I was, what I was going to say that. was... When it comes to Chris Sims uh, and the Redskins, like I understand people have you know their opinion of him because of where he what he did with Haskins. Um, he's had opportunities where he spoke on the Skins in the past, and I do want to I do want to point out the fact that I think it was like 2018 or 2017 where he said something in favor of the Skins where he felt that they were going to be a really good team. Um, I can't remember the specific words. I just want to bring it up because. There was a lot of people who agreed with him at that point. So mm-hmm. I just want to speak to how volatile um, the reactions have been. Uh, now, it is his opinion, and I think his opinion is wrong, by the way. So I want to put that out there first and foremost. I don't think Haskins is the second worst quarterback in the league behind only only by, uh, in front of uh, Tua. I don't think that's the case. Um, but I do want to say uh, – we have to listen to opinions because Dwayne Haskins still just he really hasn't proven anything yet. And it's a fair opinion to have that he's not good, but is he that bad? I completely disagree. But we do have to listen to the fact that some people just don't think that Haskins is good right now. And truth be told, he hasn't proven that he is good. Um I just like me I mean, and Alex said, we have confidence that he'll have a good season. He hasn't shown anything yet to say that he will. I, I, and that's fair, but I don't know how you can look at like Guys like Mitchell Trubisky and Josh Allen and go, yeah, they're definitely yeah. better. <laughs> Josh Allen benefits from a great defense and a, you know, a very forgiving Bills fan base, frankly. Well, and, and he's got great running. He's got some athleticism sure. running ability. You can't deny it. But the man cannot hit the broad side no, of the bar No, no, he, he's Tim Tebow with you know? a slightly stronger arm. I've always kind of looked at it that way. He's mobile, little bit, yeah, little can't, bit. not very accurate. But Tim Tebow threw every ball he threw more than ten yards was wobbling like a duck, and Allen at least can spiral it. <laughs> yeah, Allen's got a pretty yeah. strong arm, but we don't want to get in all that. Point is, we just wanted to get into that because of the Chris yeah, Sims thing, yeah. and it, you know, and it, 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 I, I get why it irked a lot of people. I don't blame them. It probably irked Haskins because Haskins is on social media yeah, a lot. And I know, you know, and you know, people are not shy at retweeting stuff at Dwayne Haskins. <laughs> 
Yeah, you know what? If I was an NFL quarterback, I would delete my Twitter. I really would. <laughs> Don't listen to any of it. I wouldn't delete it. I would not go by my own name and have a fake Twitter handle that no one knows. And if you did that, you would be Kevin Durant. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> that's but that's better than, in my mind, that's still better than what Haskins has to go through. I just think it's kind of, I mean, it's just, it's, it would mess with your mental sanity. Yes. You know, it just don't read it because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what anybody says on Twitter. It doesn't matter what any critic says. It doesn't matter about what anybody says. The only thing that matters to Dwayne Haskins or what should matter to Dwayne Haskins is what his coaches think and what his players His teammates. His yeah. teammates yeah, think. yeah, I agree with you. That's I, it. None of the rest of this is just, say family. It's just babble. Let's, yeah. well, sure. I mean, but whatever the Hogstye thinks, whatever Chris Sims right. thinks, we're just babbling for content, right. okay? And that's all Chris Sims is doing, and it shouldn't matter to a guy like Haskins. Forget it. Don't pay, not to say he is paying attention to it, but if you are, just forget yeah. it. Yeah, and I'm sure he'll take our advice. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move so. on. Because you know he's listening. Let's move on because we do have to cover uh, safeties, and we have about 25 minutes, which sounds about right. Um, so okay. it's our position group breakdown time. Uh, we yeah. are doing free and strong safety because they're kind of the same thing, in, you know, especially with how they're listed these days. The Redskins have made a couple moves at the position this year, uh, which are of note. Monte Nicholson, who was our starter, is gone. Uh, wasn't great, had a lot of off-the-field issues, but he wasn't terrible. I think some people like to blame him for everything. He was just an average safety, and it was, you know, that's what he was. Uh, we picked up... One guy in free agency and one guy in the draft, uh, Sean Davis, and I'm going to struggle with that first name. Cameron Curl. Hmm? Cameron, Cameron Curl. Curl. All yes. right. I wrote Jarman, which doesn't sound right. <laughs> that is not no. right. Uh, <laughs> he's not, his name is not Jarman. It's Cameron. Cameron. I, I think I just I hit the J and said the K. That's, that's my problem. <laughs> All right. But moving on. Uh, let's start with the draft pick, Cameron Curl. Uh, he is an interesting choice. What was he, a fifth rounder, sixth rounder? He was a late draft pick. No, he was a seventh, seventh round, round pick. pick. Uh, yeah. Looks, when you watch tape of him, he looks to have good deep ball awareness. Looks to me like he's a natural free safety. But really, I think the plan is for him to be a special teams guy for us. It, oh, you know. yeah. I mean, look, if Cameron Curl makes the active roster, that's a victory. Yeah. You know, I mean, a lot of seventh rounders end up on the practice squad. You know, from Arkansas, six one two oh six. He's got good size. Um, it's not to say I dislike. You know, I think it's fine. He didn't wow me particularly, but he's a seventh rounder. And as we said before, any time a seventh rounder does anything but get cut, that's a victory. Um, I'm not expecting much from him this year. I think you're right, Alex. If he has a role, it's going to be special mm-hmm. teams. Um, I mean, I don't know what else you can really say yeah. about him. Uh, you know, we haven't seen him play. You know, who knows? Like I said, body type wise, um, and just looking at what I've seen from his college game, looks to be more of a free than a strong to me. Probably, that's I, I'd yeah. say so. Probably yeah. so. But you know, but again, if they're but if the Redskins play more cover two, you you know, in in a at least a mm-hmm. base traditional cover two, you don't really have a free and strong safety in those right. circumstances. You know, so it's just, and I don't know if that works. We're going to get to line to Landon Collins, but I don't know how well that works for Landon Collins either. Right. You know, for that right. matter. Um, well, yeah, let, I was kind of kind of work my way through the new guys first. I know. That's I, I wasn't trying to. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's so, uh, uh, Jamal, do you have any thoughts on this guy? I'm sure you've only watched a little bit of film here and there when he was drafted, like the rest of us. No. No? <laughs> I don't. Um, <laughs> I, truth be told, like this, once we go further into the, the players on this, on, on at this position group, um, we... I, you're only going to we're only going to be talking about Landon Collins for a, a lengthy period of time. But yeah, yes, I was going to kind of save him for last for a reason. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. <laughs> but no, I don't have an opinion <laughs> on this guy. All right, fair <laughs> enough. All right, let's move on to the free agent signing we made because I think that signing Sean Davis kind of went under the radar for uh, a lot of the fan base, and you know, just you don't see a lot written about him. But this was an interesting move to me. It was early in our off season that we picked him up right and we're talking about a guy who he was in Pittsburgh for four years three seasons as a starter missed most of last year because of a shoulder injury I think he played one game um but you know other than that 
fairly healthy, like I said, started all three seasons. Second round pick out of Maryland, D.C. born. Definitely a Redskins guy because I'll give you his jersey numbers he wore in uh, Pittsburgh. Just This always tells me he grew up a Redskins fan. He wore 28, and then when 21 became available, he jumped to 21. So... And now he's 36, now he's 36. which is another meaningful yeah. number. So guess who he's a fan of? <laughs> and yeah. signed a one-year um, kind of cheap so, COVID deal to come home. I mean, the thing about Sean Davis is this was a mandatory event. The Redskins' safety group is atrocious beyond Landon sure. Collins. Troy Apke hasn't panned out, isn't going to pan out. Uh, you know, Monte Nicholson was average. He was also a wreck off the right. field and all that stuff. They had to do something, had to do something. And Sean Davis, um, you know, he's pro- he's been a bit of a disappointment probably overall. Like you said, he's been hurt. Um, but he's a legitimate veteran and a legitimate pro who can come in and start and look like he belongs. Right. And that all by itself is a victory yeah. for this group. Because, you know, again, I mean, you've got Landon Collins and nothing other than – that's guaranteed that can for sure play at a competent start. Everyone level. else was kind of yeah. a designed to be a special teams guy. DeShazer ever and Troy yeah. Aki were both picked and have both stuck around because they're special teams guys. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine having Cameron Curl on the right. roster or whatever, but you can't count yeah. on that. And Troy Apke can run fast in a straight line, and God bless him for it. But, I mean, I don't think you can count. If you have Troy Apke starting, that's a mm-hmm. negative. He's not a league average mm-hmm. player. And so Sean Davidson come in and at a minimum look like a competent vet because he's played well at yeah. times. I think he has talent. He has yeah, played well at times. Well. He's been in a good system. Yeah, and he's been in a good system in mm-hmm. Pittsburgh. You know, Pittsburgh is a quality team with quality coaches. Um, and, you know, he got hurt. You know, what can and you say? And he really only got hurt so last year. I, it's an, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You want to hear some, some Sean Davis stats? Um, you know, he he play, he started 9 of 16 games in in 2016, but he's been a full-time starter ever since then. He's had 247 tackles, um, two and a half sacks, and uh, he's had uh, five interceptions. That's not bad. So he's played. Yeah, I mean, he's played well at times, and 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 it's you know this year was a weird year for safeties too, uh, and it's probably about the best they can do. I, I always say on the show, you know who's going to get the first crack at being a starter by the contracts. Yes. You know, and Sean Davis has got uh, a three and a half million dollar cap mm-hmm. hit. He's going to start, people. Yeah. You don't sign three and a half million dollars to put him on the bench. Right. So your starters are Landon Collins and Sean Davis, and everybody else is fighting for but a spot. I, I, I really do look at this, and if that shoulder's healed up, which it's a shoulder, you know, I, I always worry about leg injuries more than upper body injuries. Uh, just for football players, I think if you lose speed, it kills your career. But like if he if he comes in healthy, I think this could be a sneaky good starter for the Redskins this year, and it helps that he's coming home. You know that's not a bad cap number for him to come back to DC and play for a year on. Uh, so like I think this guy could surprise. He could be kind of like uh, uh, Eric Flowers for us last year, where you kind of signed a guy under the radar. People are like oh, all right, whatever, and then he turns out to be one of your better players. Yeah, and just it must be said, he's not just coming home. He's a D.C. Right. native. You know, Washington, D.C. I've never heard of the Merritt School. Have you heard of Merritt School? That's his high no, school. No, I'm pretty sure that's one of the private schools. Okay, I don't know. But uh, he, that's the school he went to, which is apparently in Washington, mm-hmm. D.C. itself. I mean, he's fast. Ran a sub 4 5 hard hitter, combine. by the way. Yeah, hard hitter. You know, he's a 37-and-a-half-inch vertical leap. You know, at six one, uh, over two hundred pounds. I mean, that's he's got a lot of natural athletic, athletic ability. He did well in the mm-hmm. bench press, got some strength, twenty one reps, which I mean, and great, but that's decent. That's decent strength for, for a safety. Yeah, it's at least got to be above average, I'd think. Yeah, so I, I think he's just the profile between his experience, his um, physical attributes alone say he ought to be the right. starter. And- you know, you know I, I think he played a little bit of free safety and strong safety in Pittsburgh. Um, I think he was mainly the free his last year, but uh, he can do both, which that's fine. If they want versatile guys, which we know this uh, coaching staff has always said they like versatility, you know, it makes sense to get a guy like this. But like I said, he's a hard hitter. He's probably not going to be a ball hawk. You know, those numbers you read tell me he may get one or two picks. You know, on the year because that sounds like his average. 
Um, but yeah. You know, I don't need a free safety to be my superstar because the superstar is the guy playing strong safety for this team. Um, and I just don't know what we're really going to see as a defensive game yeah, plan that's true too. for this yeah. team. I really think that we're going to see more cover two because that's what Carolina played yeah. a lot of. But, you know, and again, just, you go go ahead, Jamal. Uh, no, I didn't want to cut you off because I, I was just going to say, but do we it's know okay. um, specific – like I, I I don't I don't dive into the weeds of things like this. The question I'm about to ask because like nine times out of ten coaches probably only know this, but do we know what coverage uh, these players know best? Like do we know what they'll be tuned into like once once the games actually start? Because the only reason why I ask that is um, you had mentioned you know like, we don't know what this defense is going to do. It's actually it's actually a question to ask, but if we if we know what like we just got to understand what these guys do well. Like for example, there are teams out here who just who understand the concept of a cover three. They understand the concepts of a cover two, but I just don't know what we're going to do, and I don't know what our players know best because it's just it's just uh, it's too many question marks. I don't know. Well, I, I can. Well, I guess number one, I think an answer is remember what Rob Henson said. Was it last week when we have him on the show? Um, uh, it was two. Uh, weeks no, two ago. weeks yeah. ago. Yeah. yeah. But Rob said that Jack Del Rio has been given carte blanche for the defense, you know. And so Rob Henson on our show, carte carte blanche, it's French, meaning clean slate, basically. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) A guy named Um, Del Rio, which is Spanish, using a French term. It's very confusing. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. And I don't think Jack Del Rio is, is also Hispanic, no, no. despite his name. So I think he's uh, the whitest guy <laughs> on the face of the earth, <laughs> actually, um, which is fine, you know, whatever you are. But point is, um, I guess my where I'm going with this, if I can get my back yeah. on train of thought here, just because – the Panthers ran a cover two mm-hmm. more does not mean that that's what Jack Del Rio yes. is necessarily going to do. And if Jack Del Rio has got carte blanche to do whatever he wants, maybe you're going to see something else. Because, I mean, to skip ahead to Landon Collins, I don't think Landon Collins is a very good cover two safety no. personally. You know, I, I, you know, I just don't think he is. Sean Davis, I think, can do that and is. Landon Collins, not. We're going to get to him, but Landon Collins, not yeah, so much. That, that was my concern because you know, that's literally what I was getting to. Like, if, do we know what they play best? Because if if we if they're not a just because like you mentioned, it, just because somebody played the cover two defense at one stop don't mean uh, and, and they're good coaches. Like they're really good coaches. That doesn't mean that they stick to what they do best. They're adept. Really good coaches know how to adjust. Really good coaches know how to tailor a system to the players that they have. So they don't have to stick to a cover two. And if these guys play better in a, in a different in a different uh, zone uh, zone type of scheme, then that's that's exactly what they're going to do. Yeah, I, I mean else. we we can get to this uh, more as we go on too. But we did cover corners last week when Jamal was out. Uh, when I talk about the uh, corners and when I look at uh, what we have at safety, to me, you're you're looking at a very logical cover one, cover three kind of team. Because uh, we do have a guy who's perfect to be that down in the middle safety in Collins, uh, and then you know there's questions on the corners and at free safety, but may- maybe it's best just to keep them all back in a zone because when you have questionable well, talent, I don't know for a good cover. I don't know for a good cover one. Did you say cover I, I, one? Well, I, don't know I think you have to one switch back and forth between them a little bit. I mean, cover one is man. You know, and I don't think this is a man cover team. Yeah, probably not. But I, I think, again, you can't just play one zone scheme. No, 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 no. And, and that's I, – I think people understand that by now. Um, and as a matter of fact, Del Rio talked about this in his comments a week ago when he did some – I can't dig it out yeah. right on the fly. But um, he was talking – they asked him about – we were not on the call. Um, but they asked him about – the base defense and what he thought about switching from a three, four to a four, three. And he went through what you've always set out, which is they're not in, we're not even in base defense right. very much. You know, it's going to talking about maybe 30% of the plays which were in base not, defense. So it, to any football fan, that's not like a deep secret. That's everybody. It's, it's not. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and um, you know, the truth of the matter is they've got a, a 50 B on the field mm-hmm. a lot. Nickel you know, is your base defense at this point. <laughs> I wouldn't go if I'd go that far, but I mean, it's certainly, it's, 
played a lot. But and so you know what, I, like the traditional cover two zone scheme gets way more complicated. Right. You know, is is what I'm trying to say. Um, I, the best coaches adapt to talent. Joe, that's what to me was the mm-hmm. Joe Gibbs' greatest strength beyond beyond his ability to to as a leader from an on the field perspective. Joe Gibbs' greatest strength was his ability to adapt. He wasn't locked into a scheme. No. Jake Gruden was terrible at it. Jake Gruden, come hell or high water, everything else be damned. Players were going to play his scheme, period. You know, it was like, I'm going to shove this round peg into a square hole. Uh, Joe Gibbs didn't do that. Hopefully Jack Del Rio will look at this group and go, okay, you know, we've got a very expensive safety in Landon Collins. He's three-fourths of a linebacker. His strength is in the box. Why not? Let's not put him back too much. Unless we really have to in a cover two situation, maybe he needs to play up. You know, I'm just spitballing here, but um, I think that's hopefully what we do with this group because um, I just don't think Landon Collins is going to succeed in a cover I, two. I agree, and you know, I think a lot of casual fans don't understand how good Joe Gibbs was at adjusting to the talent he had. He was uh, like yep. Bill Belichick learned that from Gibbs, uh, from watching Joe Gibbs over the years. Uh, like that's how good he was. Has Belichick ever no. said that? But I, know, I think no, it's no, obvious yeah. that every coach who does it well <laughs> learned it from watching guys like Gibbs do it. If you think about like the '82 team with yeah, Theismann, they were run first team. Um, they, yeah. yeah, that's mm-hmm. football was a run first game back then. But Joe, Th- but uh, John Riggins was driving right. that bus for the most part. You know, they leaned on. You know, famously ran. You know, they you ran know, like five Riggins, plays like, as their offense. Eight times yeah. on a row, yeah, and they ran him like eight times on a row at the end of the NFC mm-hmm. Championship game. We had uh, Joe Jacoby talked about that when he was on they, the show well, years ago. Well, I mean, ago. the famous story is that they even told the Dolphins, we're running it right at you right here. Well, it was the Cowboys. Oh, the Cowboys. It was the Cowboys. Sorry. It was Randy White. What Jacoby said on our show was that they were telling Randy White, this is the play, we're going to run it right at you, and they did it, and they ran him over. But if you fast forward to 91. They, yeah, they're doing air raid you know, type stuff. Mark Rippon was leading the charge, and it was yeah, basically like an early version of almost a spread right. offense. It, it was a you lot know? of single it, back, it just, right? Or yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Gibbs 2.0 was a whole different mm-hmm. thing. It was a more modern offense, you know. And he and Gibbs was smart enough to understand that his offense wasn't an NFL offense. And they brought in um, Al was Sonder, the Well, they brought in a different guy every yeah, year. Thank you for well, Al Saunders, yeah. the guy I was thinking of, you know, who had a more modern offense. So. I think that's what the best coaches do. I think Jack Del Rio is a good, solid defensive coach. He's going to recognize that this safety group um, is probably more limited mm-hmm. than you would want in terms of where players can play. Sean Davis is pretty versatile, yeah. but we don't know how he's if how well he's going to do. But Landon Collins is the big money dude, and I just think that Landon Collins is – if he was 20 pounds heavier, he'd be yeah. a linebacker. Well, and that's why I think you know, we Landon have Collins. a lot of guys like that. They're not all – Landon Collins' talent, but you, we've got a couple guys in the linebacker group that we'll eventually get to who are also who yeah. have that money backer role. That I hate that term, but uh, in, but yet you keep yeah, using it. Well, there's, I mean, we could start saying Viper, but I just got to get used to it. That was a Michigan yeah. thing, but it, as we were told by our guest, it's the same job. Yeah, so right. we have a couple guys now like that. Why don't we name it? We'll name it like we'll create we our probably own name. Will. We'll, we'll and, come- <laughs> it's just going to be cool, and Viper's always good. Remember we had the Cobra package back in the day when Sean Springs would uh, play safety? I, we'll yeah. call it like the, something totally random, like the cheeseburger package we, or something. You got, know, something no, that's no, a hog. No, it's got to be an animal. It's got to be, you know. Hogs. Hog. Well, I think that Pork. one's taken. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah I I, I, like the lion um, package or something. <laughs> um, so in terms of, look, Landon Collins – um, he, first of all, if you want to talk contract, because he's the one that matters, recall six years, $84 million, mm-hmm. $26 million was guaranteed at signing. He's got a bunch more money that comes guaranteed later in his, in his contract. Um, uh, you know, so his, uh, he has an op- option bonus for 2024 that vests this year. So he's got money guaranteed down the line. His contract is owners and there's no two ways about it. 2021 cap hit 17 million with 18 and almost 19 million dollars dead cap, and then his cap hit even as far out as 2024 is over 15 yeah. million. I mean, he he's the centerpiece you know, of this it's, defense. It's a, huge con- it's a huge contract, yeah, a huge contract. Um, 
after I watched, I did a film study on him, and you know, last year, um, he's just such an in the box, run stuffing um, guy. I just don't. I think probably the reason the Giants got rid of him, let him go, is because he's limited in his coverage mm-hmm. ability. Yeah, and I think that's a fair assessment of his weakness. Um, but you know, I, I think the problem last year was I don't think we used him very well to his strengths. Uh, you know, I, I think we did put him in the box a little, but you never really saw him running downhill on guys in run coverage. He, you know, it, there was a lot of him covering the slot, which is a mistake in my opinion. You know, I, I think they really need to uh, be better about just have him be play that like shallow center zone. A lot. And, you know, that way if he sees it's a run, he can go stop the run quickly. If he sees it's a pass, he's still there to kind of take out the guy who might be running across in the midfield. But, like, having him in man coverage on guys was a mistake. That's not yeah. a good idea. Yeah, that's not a good idea. Um, I think Collins is certainly the leader of the defensive he's backfield. Of all, out, out of sure. virtual. Well, and he seems yeah. to have... Just based on his comments, it seems like uh, he has pretty good leadership ability, and so I think he's probably good in that regard. Just for me, like you, I think you keep him out of man coverage as much mm-hmm. as possible. You know, that's that's his highest play, and best. Play use, guys to their strengths. It's very. It's a very simple <laughs> yeah. message. Yeah. Now, real quick, I mean, are we running oh, out we of got time? Ten minutes. Are, five minutes. We have a few minutes. Okay. So Troy Apke. You know, who was, uh, to what, 2017, yeah, right. 2018 it's, fourth yeah. round pick? Penn State, fast, bit, hasn't really shown much lot. other than that. <laughs> ben Hurt, and he can run, but I don't know if he's ever going to be anything more than a backup. Uh, he hasn't even been yeah. that Fra- frankly, prominent to on me, special he's on teams. the bubble. <laughs> you know? Well, uh, except if you look at, you know, assuming that if they keep four safety, yeah. we'll get to that. Um, just change your effort, special team stalwart, you know, got a, uh, got an extension, got a second yeah. extension. So he's actually signed through 2022. Dude, Shazer Everett is actually a core Redskin, you know, like the old Kedrick Golston yeah. oh, thing is. where Golston just stuck around for 10 years and is like, okay, he's like your fifth guy, but. It seems like Everett has been with the team forever, but he's really only been around since 2018. Really? <laughs> It, well, originally signed. Okay. Uh, well, you know what? I've got that on my no, spreadsheet. No, it can't that be right. So I feel like he's been here much longer than that. Well, that what? Well, see, that might have been. I might have put that because that was his. I think that was on. his last me, re-signing. Um, if it is, I need to change yeah, my yeah. chart here. Let, hold on. Let, we'll, let's, let's get this I, info I, right. Oh no. Okay. So yeah. So he was undrafted free agent out of A and M, signed by the Bucks, and was. Signed by the Redskins 2015. The reason why I put 2018 on my chart is because he was on the practice squad. Gotcha. For a while. That gotcha. Was yeah, he, he kind of jumped around um, off and on the practice squad. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna. Matter of fact, I'm gonna. Change I mean, that I, I've always been a fan of his just because you know I like special teams guys, and he's a great special teams guy to begin with. But he has shown the ability to come in on defense, at least be reliever type, and you know he'll come in for a drive or a series every game. Uh, fill in for whoever's the starter, Nicholson or uh, Landon Collins last year. And he's capable. Like, you don't lose a lot with him going in for just a little bit. Like, I don't know if I'd ever want to see him be starting 60 snaps uh, as a safety. But, you know, for a drive, he's fine. You know, he, he's a very good number three type safety in that regard. I think so. You know, it, it, yeah, he's a core special teamer. That's his right. role. So um, the other guy is Jeremy Reeves. We talked about him as a corner right. also. He's a DB, truthfully. I've listed him as a safety because he has to go somewhere. So I put he's him as a tweener. A is that kind of what uh, he is? Probably so, yeah. I mean, he's a tweener. Um, you know, he was an undrafted free agent in 2018 out of South Alabama. You know, I, I, look, I, not much to say about Jeremy Reeves. So your group... In total, in alphabetical order, Troy Apke, Landon Collins, Cameron Curl, Sean Davis, DeShazer Everett, Jeremy Reese. Of that whole group, the only two proven veterans are Landon Collins and Sean Davis. Those are your star, unquestioned right. starters. Um, so for me, if uh, to predict the group, if you keep four of them, mm-hmm. say, DeShazer Everett, core special teamer, he's he, going to be He's your there. number three guy, basically, um, locked in. Yeah. 
I just don't know what to say about Cameron Curl. So I'm going to assume for now that he's a practice squatter until he shows more. So to me, the last spot comes down to Troy Apke and Jeremy Reeves. Um, I think Apke was a draft pick, so he's going to get another year. Do you think so? I mean, this is you what, know, so year three yeah. for him? <laughs> yeah, hmm. I know. But, I, you know, that's if you make me yeah. choose – I, I would choose. tend to go with Curl just because he was chosen by this administration versus the last administration. It's, it's and possible. with Apke's yeah. injury history, I, I, I just I don't see him making it through much of a season anyway. <laughs> so I hate to be cynical. Yeah, I mean, I, but it's valid. I mean, yeah, it's valid. I, I think we, we have three guys. We know who those top three are. And whoever's your fourth guy, he's just another special team. He'll be on kick returns or something. Uh, you know, blocking or, you know, running down people. So I'm not really expecting to see Curl or Apke playing much defense defense, you know? I mean, they could keep five, I guess. Uh, We we are so weirdly thin at corner and safety depth-wise. Like, that's where it gets tricky. It does. It does. But that's my guess. I don't think they're going to keep five of these guys. That's my guess. I, I would guess four... I mean, usually teams keep what nine overall defensive backs, yeah. so it's yes. four of one, five of the other, and whoever's number nine is going to play both when he has to. Uh, yeah, that would lead you to say maybe it's Jeremy yeah, maybe. Reeves. I mean, <laughs> you know, I don't trust any of them. <laughs> I'm trying to see what I when I did my roster basin column a few weeks ago. Uh, what I even predicted? See if what I predicted then matched what I said okay. now. <laughs> Because it probably doesn't. <laughs> yeah. uh, so who did I say back there? Okay. So, oh, I did agree with myself. Outstanding. I said Landon Collins, Sean Davis, the Shazer Everett, Troy Apke, with the practice squad being Cameron Curl and Jeremy I mean, Reeves. Th- there's a good chance they also just go with three on game days at this point. You know. Well, that was just the 53. Yeah. 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 I keep on wanting to say 52. I got to remember it's 53 now. And, well, it was always 53. Didn't they add one? Or it's just for active roster. It's the active right. roster. Okay. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's it. So, yeah, I, I guess so, that's kind of – that wraps up safeties. And that should kind of wrap up the show because we're right at an hour at this point. Uh, minus all my yammering in the pre-show that I have to cut out like usual. So – As if it matters if we – eh, I try. I try, <laughs> Steve. Know. I try. Why? Yeah. Who cares? Why? But I want to thank our listeners for listening. Uh, next week's show, I'm going to be up uh, in my cabin in the woods, so that'll be fun. He may or may not be on the show depending on whether we can yeah, connect to him. Yeah, that's true. You know, or if I'm being chased by, like, a serial killer in, through the woods, you know. Or, or a bear. A bear. It was, Are there bears up in the in woods in New York? a black bear. Not so many brown bear, but I've never really seen a bear. I've only ever seen foxes, wolves, rattlesnakes, tons of deer. We have these weirdly tall turkeys that are like four feet tall. I don't know what the hell those things are. That sounds like dinner. Yeah, what it sounds uh, like it's to probably me. very gamey, very lean looking animal. Um, but you know, well, I've never seen a bear. I've heard a bear, and we we had a. I don't think you're a hunter either, though. So you're not going to kill a turkey anyway. I mean, right? I have a bow. I'm not going to kill a turkey with a bow. I could. You could. People do bow hunting with yeah. turkeys. That's a real mountain man yeah. thing to do. Well, I've been doing archery since I was like four, but I'm not a hunter either. So, you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, we've never seen a bear. There was a mountain lion attack when I was like a kid, but there are no mountain lion left. So, yeah, extinction, at least on the East Coast. Say la vie. I'm not so, – see, I'm not a sno- – my family aren't snobby people who've got a vacation home, so I can't relate yeah, to what you're saying. Yeah, it's called being middle class back in the 30s. That's when we bought it. <laughs> Military people don't have vacation oh, homes. They could have back then. <laughs> no, they could Yeah, I don't know what they made back then. I don't know what then. military people make. <laughs> yeah, but land was cheaper. That's all I know. <laughs> well, that should take us through this show. A little bit of rambling in the end for you folks. But uh, other than that, just stay safe out there. <laughs>